So we now continue with organic chemistry. We had done with the nomenclature of the organic chemistry. So the nomenclature is very, very, very important. Uh, if you want to repeat and see that video again and again, please do that so that you are completely aware about how you are going to go through the nomenclature of organic chemistry. <clears throat> now we are going to study the three compounds or uh, acids. There are five of them, but the alcohol and carboxylic acid is removed from a portion as per the new COVID revised portion. So. We, have, we are going to learn three different types of compounds or we can say three homologous series that is alkane, alkenes and alkynes. So we will be studying in uh, detail about alkane, then alkene and alkyne. So in that study, we will be seeing that what is the, uh, you know, uh, as if a normal thing like how we are going to prepare in the laboratory, what are the different methods of preparation, what are the different uh, chemical reactions what is going to take place in those and then the uses. So, yeah, the same as normal any chapter of any particular uh, study of a compound. So we'll be having the study of hydrocarbons. So, uh, so hydrocarbons in general, we know that the term aliphatic open chain organic compound contains carbon and hydrogen only. So when that particular compound is made up of only carbon and hydrogen, then that organic compound is called as E hydrocarbon so and moreover if it is aliphatic in nature aliphatic means it's in a open chain if it is an open chain then it is an organic compound is called as the hydrocarbon the molecular formula will be cxy so the molecular formula <coughs> the molecular formula will be given as cx H Y. So X and Y will be the numbers which you are going to put. So depending upon the homologous series and the general formula we'll be having for that, you will be having the different uh, kinds of compounds in it. So uh, that's the formula where X and Y are whole numbers. The main groups of aliphatic carbocarbon are divided into two main groups. So we have studied it earlier. The two main groups are the aliphatic. So aliphatic is divided into two parts one is saturated saturated and another is unsaturated so saturated are the one in which the carbon to carbon bond is only single there is only single carbon to carbon bond whereas here it is divided into two parts if it is double bond or if it is triple bond over here so if it is double bond or triple bond accordingly you will be having uh, the saturated hydrocarbon called as alkanes so these are nothing but alkanes these are the alkenes and these are the alkynes so that's are the these are the three kinds of bonds which are present in the carbon to carbon and accordingly the name of the aliphatic carbon as saturated alkanes or unsaturated alkenes or alkynes. So unsaturated hydrocarbons homologous series alkenes and alkynes. So accordingly we can see that alkanes are called also as paraffins. They are called as paraffins. Okay, whereas the alkenes are called as olefins and the alkynes do not have a specific name. So there are the alkanes which are paraffins. So if you see the structure, the nature or we can say the different kind of uh, properties of alkanes, the nature wise they are saturated hydrocarbon. They have a single covalent bond, so C to C single covalent bond and the general formula of this will be CNH2N plus 2. So this is the single, uh, the general formula CNH2N plus 2. Accordingly, if the molecular formulas of methane will be at a CK value 1 le liya, then the CH4. If it is ethane, CK N ka value 2 le lenge, then it will be C, uh, C2H6, so it will be ethane. And accordingly with the structure formula and the condensed formula and the IOPAC names given to those things. So this is something which just we have done earlier also. Uh, exactly similar one. So next one is the alkenes which are olefins. 
the unsaturated hydrocarbons and they have got a double bond over here and uh, they there is no molecular formula for a methane there is no methane because not possible because you cannot have a double bond between there is only one carbon so that's why the first uh, homologous series ka first uh, compound in case of alkenes is ethene okay so that is ethene over here and the general formula cnh2n uh, is the general formula so okay, let's see c2h4 is the first element that is ethene so ch2 double bond ch2 or uh, iopac name ethene or tribal name ethylene so if it is tribal name it will be ethylene whereas the uh, alkynes over here they are the sub formula CnH2n minus 2 will be the formula of that thing and therefore we CH triple bond CH will be the structure formula again they cannot be a methane it will be because there is no possibility of having a triple bond with only one carbon so only when there are two carbons you can have a triple bond accordingly the it start the first compound in an alkyne is a ethene okay ethyne so ethyne okay and uh, it's also called as acetylene okay so the first compound over here the first compound is methane and ethane is the next one here it is ethene which is given as the tribal name as ethylene and here it is ethyne and the tribal name is acetylene Okay, acetylene, that is the uh, common name for ethyne. So, if we differentiate between saturated organic compounds and unsaturated organic compounds, the first one is methane and ethane, over here ethene and ethyne. So, special structural feature wise, they contain carbon atoms joined by a single covalent bond. So, saturated will have a single covalent bond, whereas they uh, unsaturated, they will contain a double co do covalent bond or a triple covalent bond. Uh, here in saturated, all the valencies of the carb each carbon are satisfied by hydrogen atoms forming single covalent bonds. Okay, what we form will be a single covalent bond formed between all the hydrogen atoms present over there. So that is why. Whereas here the valency of at least two ca carbon atoms are not fully satisfied by the hydrogen. You have carbon to carbon double bond or carbon to carbon triple bond. So at least two carbons will be such which will be not being uh, taking that much number of hydrogen as its valency. The non-availability of electrons in the single covalent, uh, covalent bond makes them less reactive and therefore undergo characteristic substitution reaction only. Now this is the most important part of the chapter. Saturated hydrocarbons are such that unloka structure is It is like this. Because it is like this, that's why in case of any reaction taking place, they are already in a stable condition. Itna ke they are not even polar covalent. Carbon and hydrogen ke beech mein the, uh, the electronegativity is also so you know, less that it is not going to even have a polar covalency. Now because it is not even polar and it is just a simple covalent bond, that's why it is non-reactive. So in case any particular substance needs to react over here, the only possibility is a substitution. So ye H niklega or uske balle Cl aayega. Ye H niklega, uske balle OH aayega. So whatever is going to happen, there will be no addition of the thing, but there will be a substitution of an hydrogen atom by some another radical or a, a particular kind of another atom. So it is seen that the type of reaction the type of reaction in case of saturated will always be substitution there would be only substitution reaction taking place in the saturated hydrocarbons whereas over here what happens is their structure is such that they will always have a double bond with carbon so ye hai carbon double bond carbon ya to say, ye, uh, then you have got one h here and one h here one h here and one h here so there is very much possible that if cl2 comes over here definitely kya hoga yaha se ek bond niklega aur idhar idhar cl cl add ho sakta hai so <coughs> 
here what is going to happen is that in such cases, in unsaturated cases, the type of reaction, first kind of reaction or the type of reaction which is going to take place is addition. It will be addition reaction which is going to take place in both of these. Okay, the unsaturated will be having the addition reaction taking place over there. So, jo bhi hai C two C two H C two H four tha, to Cl two add hone ke baad mein C H it will be C two H two H four Cl two. ऐसे करके सिर्फ एडिशन हो जाएगा सो दैट्स द मेन थिंग दैट नॉन ऑलिव इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन सिंगल कोवेलेंट बॉन्ड मेक्स देम लेस रिएक्टिव एंड देयरफॉर अंडरगो कैरेक्टरिस्टिक सब्स्टिट्यूशन रिएक्शंस ओनली इन सैचुरेटेड वन वेयर एज इन केस ऑफ द अनसैचुरेटेड बिकॉज़ ऑफ द अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन द इलेक्ट्रॉन वाज अवेलेबल ओवर देयर इन द डबल और ट्रिपल बॉन्ड मेक्स देम मोर रिएक्टिव एंड देयरफॉर अंडरगो कैरेक्टरिस्टिक एडिशन रिएक्शन ओनली सो दीज आर गोइंग टू गो फॉर एडिशन रिएक्शन वेयर इज दीज द सैचुरेटेड आर गोइंग टू गो फॉर सब्स्टिट्यूशन रिएक्शंस सो दैट्स व्हाई द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक रिएक्शन सब्स्टिट्यूशन रिएक्शन रिएक्शन इनवॉल्व्स डायरेक्ट डिस्प्लेसमेंट और सब्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ एन एटम और ग्रुप ऑफ एटम बाय अनदर एटम और ग्रुप ऑफ एटम्स लाइक अल्केन्स Uh, will uh, replace the H and by Cl or Br atom. So that's what is going to happen in substitution reaction. Whereas in addition reaction, reaction involving action, addition of the attacking reagent or uh, that is hydrogen, for example, hydrogen, halogens, etc. across the double or triple bond of an unsaturated compound to yield a saturated product. So the condition will be that an unsaturated compound whenever it reacts it is going to form into a saturated compound because it's double bond or triple bond is going to form into a single bond so that's why normally whenever the reaction takes place the alkenes and alkynes will first become an alkane okay alkynes will become alkenes and then alkenes will become alkanes okay so wo reaction aise hi hoga ki pehle triple bond double bond hoga fir double bond single bond hoga so there will be an addition of the atoms which are going to be there because there is the availability of electrons so the reaction over here will be addition reaction this is very important to understand because if you understand this concept then the reactions the learning of the rea chemical reactions in case of organic chemistry becomes easy okay if you know that what is the kind of reaction which is going to take place an addition reaction or a substitution reaction so that was the characteristics about the hydrocarbons and now we go to the main thing and that is about the alkane so now we are going to study in detail about the alkanes the sources and nomenclatures and preparations everything one by one so let's start with the alkane so So what we have over here is the first homologous series that is alkanes. We are going to learn in details about alkanes. Alkanes are saturated aliphatic hydrocarbons containing a carbon-carbon single bond. They contain C-C covalent and a C-H covalent bonds in their molecules. Since all the four valencies of the carbon atom are fully satisfied. by forming single covalent bond these compounds are said to be saturated alkanes are known as paraffins para means little and fins and affinity so it has little affinity paraffins why is it called as paraffins because it has got little affinity very less reactive okay so they contain strong c2c and c2h bonds and hence are relatively chemically are relatively chemically inert Uh, so general formula over here is CnH2n plus two. Okay, this is the uh, general formula of all the alkanes. Source-wise alkanes distribution. Alkanes are widely distributed in marshy lands, air, and coal mines. So in air, in coal mines, everywhere you will find that there will be uh, this uh, widely distributed in marshy lands. uh main sources the main sources of alkanes are natural gas and petroleum natural gas containing about 75% methane and is found associated with petroleum and uh, marsh gas produced by bacterial decay of vegetable matter containing methane and fire lamp uh, that is coal pockets 
containing large amount of methane and are called fire damp. The methane is one is also one of the gases which contribute to contributes to our greenhouse effect, whose blanketing effect over the earth's surface results in global warming. So this is about the general thing about methane or the sources that it is present mainly in the natural gas, the methane which is there in the marsh marshy lands, and also in the decaying of any substances. Also in the coal mines, there are these uh, uh, methane pockets. And methane are basically the greenhouse gases. One of the greenhouse gases is methane, which is causing global warming. So that all about the source and about general information about alkane. Now we see the nomenclature. The common name system, the first four members of the uh, series are called by their common or tribal names that is methane, ethane, propane, butane, etc. And refer to their sources or uh, characteristic properties. From the fifth alkane onwards, alkanes are named by uh, prefixing the Greek numericals pent, hex, uh, hept, and, uh, and terminal A and E. The N indicating that C number of C atoms uh, in the alkane. So yeah, so we very well know that we have seen in the nomenclature that the number of C's is given the names that first ek rega the myth, it, pro, but, and then it will be pent, hex, hept. Uh, Oct, Nana, okay. So this way it is just going to be the name that way and with a suffix of N. So that's why it will be methane, propane, butane, hexane, octane, okay. So that's the way it is there. And accordingly, the IOPEC system also the system remains the retains the non common names for the first 10 that is C1 to C10 alkynes, but is used for naming higher branch the. Uh, chain alkane so uh, that's why we are just going to have it that way so accordingly we have the molecular formula okay, the uh, first 10 will be methane ethane propane butane pentane hexane heptane octane non uh, non name and decan decane so that are the different homologous series uh, structural formula wise also it's very simple the structure is Absolutely simple. If this is one C, you just have to have the tetravalency of this thing. Accordingly, there will be one H, one H, one H, one H. The same way, if I'm just going to have two C's, then I just remove one C, put one over here, and accordingly it will have its own tetravalency. So it will be one H, one H, one H, one H. Agar or C hai, to or ek lal denge, to uska bhi tetravalency hai. So accordingly, it will be H, 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 H. And or ek C hai, to you just go on, get it, and you can just keep on giving, adding this H over here. Uh, C over here and it will just make it into the next step. So accordingly, you will be having a CH4, the first one, the next is C2H6, C3H8, then C4H10, H10 and C5H12. Uh, okay, this is how we are going. It's, it's a methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane. Okay. So accordingly, it will be C10H22, which is nothing but decane. Right, so structure formula, very easy to know. And uh, if you want to make an electronic structure, then electronic structure can be just converted in this form that will make the uh, structures of carbon at electrons as dots and that of the uh, hydrogen as X. So accordingly, it will be a structure like this. You can just add this one more here, this over here. Now here between this two will be only dots and dots. And whereas this will be dot and cross, dot and cross. Oh, sorry, again it will be dot and dot. And here it will be dot and cross. So, so if I see this complete thing, it will be dot and over here. It will be dot and cross. It will be dot and cross. Here it will be dot and dot. So uh, this is how we are going to have the dot and cross kind of things over here. Uh, in case, in sorry, in the textbook they are taken the crosses to be C's and dots to be hydrogen. So it's exactly ulta of this thing. Doesn't matter. It's exactly the same thing. So just reverse that. Okay. Uh, so methane, carbon has four. Uh, me, carbon has four electrons in the outermost shell, which are shared by four electrons of four hydrogen atoms. That is one carbon atom joins to four hydrogen atoms by single covalent bonds. And ethane, there are two carbon atoms 
uh, and uh, six hydrogen atoms in the ethane. The two carbon atoms are joined a single covalent bond uh, and three remaining valencies of each carbon are taken by three hydrogen atoms on each so with single bond. So accordingly you will be having uh, it is this way that if it is just two then two car between the two carbon there is a single bond and each carbon atom will have three other hydrogens connected to them. We now move on to the preparation. So main thing that is preparation. So first is preparation which is going to be done with the help of sodium ethanoid. So preparation first one is by sodium ethanoid. Okay. Now sodium ethanoid is given as the CH3COONA. This is sodium. Now this is ethanoid and this is sodium. So ethanoid. So sodium ethanoid. Why ethanoid? Because there are two C's. Two C's. So ethane and O8. Why? Because there are OO over there. So that's why it is sodium. It is ethanoid and then sodium. So always sodium will be said to be first. So sodium ethanoid. Uh, sodium ethanoid uh, is going to react with NaOH. Uh, so that is going to be plus NaOH. This reaction is going to be done with the help of CaO as a catalyst and when heated it is going to give me CH4 plus it is going to give me Na2CO3. So this is what happens and uh, the same thing if this is this for methane and the same one if I am going to do it with for uh, Ethane ke balle mujhe, methane ke balle ethane chahiye So I'll have to take ethane over ke balle propanoid So I can have sodium propanoid So Now sodium propanoid Okay This is C2H5COONA plus NaOH With the same kind of reaction CaO triangle here will be C2H6 plus Na2CO3. This is exactly what is going to happen. This is uh, for methane and this is for ethane. So accordingly you can understand if I want more and more, then I will prepare it for butanoid. So accordingly I will keep on increasing this thing. And this kind of reaction is called as it is called as D car Bo oxidization. It is B carboxy or carboxylation. Decarboxylation that means you are removing the carbonate from this thing and causing forming a carbon. So that's why it is decarboxylation, which is because you are removing carbon and oxygen from this thing to give you C2H6. So from an ethanoid, you are removing carbon and oxygen. That's why it is called as decarboxylation. So decarboxylation reaction is in this particular way. Uh, the if you see the uh, test, I mean, the condition, how you are going to do it? It's a very simple thing. You are going to take a test tube over here, and in the test tube, you are going to take over here the sodium propanate or whatever you want head accordingly, and then you are going to just heat this thing. So when you heat this thing and of course so what you will be having over here is the mixture of uh, soda lime and ethanoid. So uh, that because soda lime is nothing but this plus CaO. So this plus CaO. So that will be, suppose I take this thing, it will be CH3CO, Na will be there plus NaOH will be there plus CaO will be there. So this combination of this two is called as soda lime. Okay, soda lime is a combination of NaOH plus CaO. So that's why it is uh, given a soda lime. And then you are just going to be taking it in a delivery tube. Now, you know all organic compounds are insoluble in water. So always you are going to collect them in water. So you are going to collect them in, under water. So pani hai yaan pe and you bubble out the things into this is nothing but now because you have taken it. So this will be methane. So it will be CH4. <clears throat> so this is how it is going to be there that you are going to have a glass jar water will be there. So we are going to have this by the downward displacement of water. So we see the reactants over here. 
सोडियम एसिटेट और सोडियम प्रोपेनेट और सोडा एंड सोडा लाइन द सोडा लाइन में मिक्सचर ऑफ सोडियम हाइड्रोक्साइड एंड कैल्शियम ऑक्साइड प्रोसीजर द रिएक्टेंट्स आर हीटेड इन हार्ड ग्लास टेस्ट ट्यूब सोडा लाइन इज यूज इन इन प्रेफरेंस टू एन एच सिंस इट इज नॉट डेलीक्यूसेंट एंड डज नॉट अटैक ग्लास सो प्रोडक्ट मीथेन एंड इथेन रिस्पेक्टिवली आर फॉर्म एंड द कलेक्शन इज सी एच फोर और सी टू एच सिक्स इज कलेक्टेड बाई डाउनवर्ड डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ वॉटर डी कार्बोक्सीडेशन एलिमिनेशन ऑफ द मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ सीओ टू फ्रॉम कार्बोलैक्सिक एसिड सो इन दबो रिएक्शन सीओ टू इज एलिमिनेटेड एज अ कार्बोनेट एंड दैट्स वाई इट इज कॉल्ड एज डी कार्बो ऑक्सीडेशन सो दिस वॉज द फर्स्ट मेथड ऑफ फाइंडिंग आउट द लेबोरेटरी मेथड ऑफ गेटिंग मीथेन और इथेन through laboratory preparation using sodium ethanoid or sodium propanoid the next method is so i just need not have this part so i'll just add it to this part the next method is by the use which is also called as a general method and this general method over here is by using of iodomethane so what you are going to do is remove the iodine from the iodomethane so that is called as a general method so general method is normally used uh, when you are going to use it in bulk quantity so when it is going to be done in a large quantity you are going to use any kind of a uh, uh, iodomethane or bromoethane so we are going to take certain things like that so it will be like ch3i and it is going to be reacting with the uh, nascent hydrogen so we are going to react it with nascent hydrogen over here and this nascent hydrogen is going to give you and of course what you will be requiring over here will be zn or cu couple okay this is a zn and cu couple which will be here and, and there will also be alcohol which will be needed as a reagent and that will be giving you ch4 plus hi so this is one reaction the same reaction if i am taking other one that is c2h5br plus 2h is going to give you the same kind of a reaction over here uh, it will be with zn and cu couple and with alcohol is going to give you c2h6 plus hbr so that is how you are going to remove the halogen over here and uh, the same can also be done with uh, so the last one is ch3i the 2 cci plus 2 na is going to react with uh, the presence of ether and going to give you c2h6 plus 2 nai so this one is called as the words w o r t z reaction so words reaction is going to be used when you are going to use sodium as uh, the uh, kind of a catalyst or you can say the reactive material so you can see the reactant in case of a methyl iodide uh, the n ethyl bromide uh, n c u z n couple in alcohol uh, which in evolves uh, nascent hydrogen so when you are going to have a c u and z n ka couple so a, a metal thing which has got c u and z n in it and you put it into alcohol there will be evolution of hydrogen nascent hydrogen over there so the procedure alkaline halide and halogen mixture uh, al alcohol mixture is added to zncu couple kept in a conical flask the al alkyl halide is reduced to nascent hydrogen and the collection is the alkene is collected by the downward displacement of water and the other way is the words reaction it is not suitable for preparation of alkenes with odd number of carbons for example methane so the words reaction is going to be there where i need the carbon numbers to be 2 4 6 8 with the words reaction so this is going to be used. so words reaction is there only for the having the alternate number of the uh, homologous series where it is the uh, where carbon atoms is in a even number and not odd numbers so if it is in even number like c2 h4 c2 c4 c6 h8 we are going to do yes sorry c8 so we are going to use words reaction where you are going to take accordingly over your c h2 c h3 ke bare c agar maine diya next case ke liye to uh, agar mujhe so if i am taking over here c3 h6 i then i am going to get over here c4 this ek ke milte jayega but anyway you just need to learn one of them so that is uh, this part 
So they're all about the preparation of methane and ethane uh, in the laboratory and in general uh, thing. The physical properties of methane and ethane are nature, color and odor. Now that's one point. So it is gaseous in nature. So gas at ordinary temperature, it is colorless and odorless. So methane is a colorless, odorless, clear gas. Uh, at ordinary temperature. Solubility wise, they are almost insoluble in water, soluble in organic solvents like acetone. And uh, melting point, it is minus 182 degree, 0.5 degrees Celsius. So liquefaction, the, if you take that gas and you want to liquefy it, you will have to cool it to minus 182 degrees Celsius. And if you want to solidify it, it will be minus 161.5 degrees. So boiling point is going to be minus 161.5 and the melting point will be uh, one, minus 182.5. So if I'm taking it to minus 184 point, it is going to become solid, whereas it is going to become liquid if it is minus 161.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, vapor density of methane and ethane. The methane, the uh, CHO molecular weight is 16 and the vapor density is 8. Whereas the ethane, the molecular density is 30, molecular weight is 30. So vapor density is 15. We know that molecular uh, vapor density is 2 into molecular, uh, sorry, uh, molecular mass is 2 into vapor density. So accordingly, if the molecular mass is known to you, automatically we can find out the vapor density as half of it. So since the molecular weight of methane is 16, so the well, uh, vapor density is 8. So if the ethane ka molecular mass is 30, so it is 15. So that's about the physical properties of uh, methane and ethane. We now move on to the chemical properties of methane and ethane in the next video.